All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Mob Spotlight. And again, you know, if you haven't heard, Pat Musitano was gunned down Friday afternoon in the Hamilton area. Rest in peace to Pat. Respect to his whole family. So I said, let's do a mob spotlight on the Musitano crime family. Let's get busy. Gentlemen, you know the rules. Wipe your feet on the rug, knock before entering, throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I just lit up a little bit of Gorilla Glue. Salute to my GGC crew. Let's get busy. You know what time it is. It's time for business. The Musitano crime family, a Andragata organized crime family based in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, as well as Platti in southern Italy and Bucinasco and Barreggio in northern Italy. The Musitano family was founded by Angelo Musitano in Canada in the 1940s and was one of three centralized mafia organizations in Hamilton, with the other two being the Lupino crime family and the Papalia crime family. Unlike the other two Hamilton families, the Musitanos did not form a strong alliance with the Buffalo crime family, staying closer to their Andragheta cell. The killings of Johnny Papalia and his lieutenant, Carmen Barilato, in 1997, ordered by brothers Angelo and Pat Musitano, had effectively wiped out the family's remaining leaders in Canada. One news report stated that the events of 1997 decapitated the Papalia family. The brothers were arrested and sentenced in 2000, being released in 2006. A power struggle within the Hamilton Mafia had been the result of several attempts made on Pat's life in the 2010s. Angelo being killed in 2017, and finally Pat being killed Friday afternoon. In 1937, Angelo Musitano, who was also known as the Beast of Delianova, fled illegally from Delianova, Italy to Canada after killing his sister Rosa and her partner after he believed she had disgraced the family by becoming pregnant out of wedlock. He lived under the name Jim D'Augustino upon arriving in Canada. In 1940, an Italian court convicted Angelo in absentia to 30 years in prison. In 1965, Angelo was extradited to Italy to serve his sentence. The Beast had two nephews, Anthony Tony Musitano and Dominic Musitano. And he's a picture of both of them. That's Dominic and Anthony walking behind him, the two cousins with this lovely lady by the side of Dominic. In 1978, Dominic Musitano, owner of a Hamilton haulage company, Rocco Lupino and Angelo Natali, president of the Ontario Haulers Association, were charged with conspiracy to commit extortion after police uncovered a protection racket on Ontario's independent trucking industry. In January of 1983, Tony was sentenced to 15 years in prison for bombing a number of businesses in Hamilton, including bakeries. While in prison, he orchestrated the murder of Toronto mobster Dominic Racco of the Siderno Group, who violated their cocaine trade agreement by dealing behind Musitano's back and also owed the Musitano family as much as half a million dollars. Tony Musitano befriended inmate Billy Rankin at the Millhaven Institution in Kingston, who was due to be released in December that year. Giuseppe Joey Avignani, nephew of Tony and Dominic Musitano, often visited Tony in prison to discuss details of the plot, which was secretly recorded by the police. Rankin was released on December 7th and given the okay by Dominic Musitano. On the night of December 10, 1983, Racco got into his car in front of his Mississauga apartment with Rankin, Dominic Musitano, and Peter Majesty, thinking it was to discuss a potential drug trade. The night he was taken to a railway track and killed. In March of 1984, Dominic and Tony Musitano Avignani and Rankin were arrested. Dominic Musitano received six years for being an accessory after the fact to murder. Tony Musitano, already in prison on the bombing charges, was sentenced to 12 years concurrently. Avignani got five years and Rankin was sentenced to 12 years, all three pleading guilty to conspiracy to commit murder. Tony was granted full parole in 1990. Dominic Musitano's two sons, Pasquale Pat or Fat Pat and Angelo Ange Musitano, joined their father in organized crime. By 1992, the Hamilton Wentworth police estimated that the family was earning $14 million a year through various aspects of illegal gaming. Pat Musitano was president of PL Tire Recycling Inc. in 1992. He was found guilty of failing to make his Mount Hope tire dump conformed to the Ontario Fire Code. 
he and his father were handed a $1.8 million fine from the Ministry of Environment for its cleanup of the site, a fine Pat dodged with a 1993 bankruptcy claim. The crime family was led by Dominic until his death on August 13, 1995 from a heart attack at the age of 57. May he rest in peace. Pat Musitano took over as boss of the family. In 1997, Pat Musitano was in charge of a sports betting ring which brought in as much as 100,000 in bets per week. His cousin Joey also led a network for distributing illegal gambling machines in bars. Also later in 1997, the family ordered the hits of Johnny Papalia, to whom the Musitanos owned 250000 to cover bookmaking debts, and Papalia's right-hand man, Carmen Barilato. The hitman for both murders and for the 1985 murder of Salvatore Alaimo, who owned gambling money to the Musitano crime family, was Kenneth Murdoch. In November 1998, Murdoch pled guilty to three counts of second-degree murder and was sentenced to life in imprisonment and named Pat and Angelo as the men who had ordered the murders. A disgrace! He also said that Angelo had been waiting in the vehicle outside the Barilato murder. The motive for the hit was self-protection. Pat was convinced that Barilato would target him in retribution for the Papalia killing, so he and Murdoch acted first. According to Murdoch, the Musitano brothers also had been fed up with being a satellite crew of the Buffalo family and having to pay tribute money to the family. Murdoch also claimed that he was waiting for Pat Musitano to approve the murders of four Lupino crime family members, Natali Lupino and Vincenzo Lupino, the two sons of Giacomo Lupino, and Dominic Violi and Giuseppe Violi, the two sons of Paolo Violi. Also revealed by Murdoch was that Pat Musitano had discussed with Montreal mob boss Vito Rizzuto and Gaetano Panepinto about Rizzuto investing in Ontario. Eventually, the Canadian intelligence agencies were convinced that the Musitano brothers did not act alone in the murder of Johnny Papalia and Carmen Barilato. In February of 2000, the Musitano brothers were sentenced to 10 years for conspiracy in the murder of Barilato in a plea bargain arrangement instead of their initial first-degree murder charges. No action was taken against either in relation to the Papalia or Aliamo murder. In 2004, both brothers were denied parole. In October of 2006, the Musitano brothers were both released from prison. Angelo was rearrested in March of 2007 for a parole violation. He was held in the minimum security Frontenac Institution until June of 2007, where the parole board decided not to return him to prison. Murdoch was also released on parole in 2011 after serving 13 years in prison. Since the brothers' release, the police had little involvement with the family for some years. Then in September of 2015, Pat Musitano's 2013 Fort Edge was set on fire in a suspected arson. His home also sustained minor damage. On May the 2nd of 2017, Angelo Musitano was shot dead in his truck in the driveway of his home in Waterdown, Ontario in broad daylight at the age of 39. Surveillance video showed a Ford Fusion in front of the home and a heavy set man shooting Angelo. The vehicle was later found abandoned. It had been stolen previously. Almost two months later, on June 26, 2017, Pat Musitano's home was shot at multiple times during the night. No one was injured. Hamilton police did not receive cooperation from the family. Pat refused police protection. Before his death, Angelo wrote a faith-based book called I Found Him, claiming that starting a family and finding religion changed him. On January 11, 2018, investigations into Angelo Musitano's death revealed four vehicles were involved and that he was stalked in the days leading up to his murder. On January 23rd, news reports from a press conference indicated that police believed that Angelo's murder and a Woodbridge, Ontario killing of veterinary technician Mila Barberi while she sat in her car with her boyfriend two months earlier in March of 2017, not previously considered to be related, appeared to have been carried out by the same individual based on footage of the shooter and the car used from surveillance cameras at the two locations. Detective Sergeant Peter Tom of Hamilton Police stated there is similar evidence, the same M.O. in the Black Honda Coupe. According to York Regional Police, Barberi was not likely the intended target. Barberi's boyfriend, Severio Serrano, who was shot in the arm, was discovered to have connections to the Indragata through his father, Diego Serrano of Vaughan, who was sentenced 
to four years and six months in prison on two counts of drug conspiracy and one possession of proceeds of crime on January 15th of 2018. Was an associate of crime figure Antonio Sergi of Toronto who was killed two weeks after Barberi's murder. Police did not find a link between Angelo's and Barberi's murder and the shooting of Pat Musitano's house in June of 2017. On September 13 of 2018, real estate agent Albert Lavarone, Albert Lavarone was shot outside his home in Ancaster, Ontario, a similar fashion, a similar fashion as in the Musitano murder. Sources involved in the investigation said it was possible that the shooting was in retaliation for the previous actions against the Musitano family, specifically the hit on Angelo, according to some sources. In any event, it was part of a mafia struggle in Hamilton, according to several news outlets. A Toronto Star summary added that the latest hit came in the midst of a dispute between two Niagara region groups of mobsters who are both tied to the New York State Buffalo mob. Laverone had no criminal record, but was known to police as an associate to known mobsters in Hamilton. However, as of September 15, 2018, police had not explained his alleged connections to the criminal underworld and have not determined if it was a factor in his death. On September 20, 2018, the police task force of Hamilton, York, and RCMP under Project Scopa arrested Jabril Abdallah Hassan in Hamilton and issued Canada-wide arrest warrants and later international warrants for Michael Kudmore and Daniel Tomasetti, who had fled to Mexico. A $50,000 reward for information leading to their arrest were also offered by police. Neither of the two had been arrested as of mid-April 2019. Jabril Abdallah Hassan has already been charged with two counts of first-degree murder and three counts of conspiracy to commit murder in both the Musitano and Barbary murders and attempted murder on Serrano. Kudmore was captured on surveillance camera at both murders with the same black Honda. Daniel Ranieri of Bolton, Ontario is believed to be connected to orchestrating the murders. He was found dead in Mexico in March of 2018. On April 17th of 2019, Tony Musitano died in Saladonia, Ontario of natural causes at the age of 72. Pat Musitano took over as the head of what was once one of Hamilton's most notable crime families alongside the Papalias and the Lupinos. On April 25th of 2019, Pat Musitano was shot four times outside his lawyer's office, sustaining life-threatening injuries. He was taken to Sunnybrook Health Sciences in Toronto. By May 1st of 2019, he was no longer in critical condition and was released from hospital on May 8th. This man took a bullet in his head and survived. A National Post report made no comment as to the probable culprits for the attempted hit on Pat Musitano, but said that the family's enemies are known to include criminal groups in Hamilton, Buffalo, Montreal, and elsewhere, including the Lupino and Papalia crime gangs. On 2019, a CBS News report later quoted a mafia expert as stating that Rizzuto's death paved the way for upheaval in the underworld. There is a power struggle left from the vacuum from Rizzuto. A report by the Hamilton Spectator discussed a resurgence of mafia violence in Hamilton and surrounding areas that has most recently included the shooting of Hamilton mob boss Pat Musitano, but made no connection to the Lupino family. Sources contacted by CBC News led the site to state that some sort of underground power struggle is tearing through the region as old scores are settled and players jockey for power in a time of unrest. On July 10th of 2020, Pat Musitano was shot to death beside his armor-plated SUV in broad daylight in the parking lot of a Burlington shopping plaza on Plains Road East at the age of 52. Two other individuals sustained injuries, one of them with gunshot wounds. One of them with gunshot wounds was Musitano's bodyguard, John Clary. Since the death of his protectors, since the death of his protectors, Vito Rizzuto in 2013 and Tony Musitano in 2019, Pat had been living on borrowed time, former Hamilton police detective Paul Manning told the Toronto Star. Manning also said that at the time of Pat's murder, he had made enemies due to a scam that involved attracting investors to a gravel business. Pat's life had been at risk for some years, according to the Toronto Sun. Quote, Pat Musitano signed his death warrant on May 31st of 1997, just minutes after longtime underworld chieftain Johnny Papalia hit the sidewalk dead. 
Still, again, rest in peace to uh, Fat Pat Musitano. This is the way I see it, even though my, you know, what I think does not matter. But I feel that if somebody takes a bullet in the head and survives, you know, make it a way to let him go. I was, you know, like Pat should have just disappeared. He should have just disappeared. But you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes you live by the sword and you die by the sword. Respect is your boy, Big Rich. Queens, New York City, Mob Spotlight. You know the rules. Like, comment, share. Let me know what you're smoking on. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. Salute. We'll talk soon.